Welcome back to Advanced Native Mobile Programming on the week 6 and this week's topic is about Android KTX and Picasso. Okay, let's start the class. And what is Android KTX? Android KTX is a set of Kotlin extensions that are included with uh, Jetpack yeah, and other Android libraries. So the KTX is used to help us create our chains replace the java style codes into the more convenient more pleasant of kotlin's okay so um, the android ktx try to introduce uh, the use of lambda function the use of uh, uh, kotlin short shortcut of codes and so on okay so basically um, it's an effort by the google to make uh, the android more convenient yeah by replacing uh, some of functions and to extend to the new uh, Kotlin way okay basically it's not replacing but it's way like uh, changing the style yeah change the style of codes uh, from the Java styles to the Kotlin styles so, okay so the basic core KTX is is quite useful and it it takes a, a lot of library to use for for example, it can handle fragments, palettes, SQLite collection, and so on. Okay, so um, it can uh, speed up your codes. Yeah, you can code more easier and faster using the Android Core or Android KTX, yeah, Kotlin extension. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at several example uh, about what the, the KTX looks like and how it can help us. To speed up our uh, programming development on Android. So, um, if you ever work with the share preference, is a some kind of object that store informations, the key and value informations, um, to the applications. Yeah, you can, you you usually see these um, codes. Yeah, so basically, it's has share preference object. We define it or we, we initialize the share preference and then we call the edit and then followed by the put whatever it is yeah put string or put boolean or put integer and we have to value here the first is the key of the key of these integers and the value of it's the, inter, uh, the integer okay so we call it apply after all, after after you put a boolean to store the boolean into the applications yeah in Android KTX, um, you can reduce or use the lambda styles. Yeah, we can replace the previous codes with the lambda style. So it looks like this. Okay, share preference dot edit, and then you can see we have a lambda function, opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket, and of course um, there there is only one parameter here. Can you you can replace with with it, and then we have. Uh, several things to do inside this edit share reference so for for instance we want to put three items three integer or sorry three boolean yeah inside this share reference so we call the put boolean key the put boolean key two the put boolean key three okay so basically what we what uh, you see here is similar like this and and it can called more than one boolean at one time and it's already have apply inside this edit lambda function okay so it is the benefit of lambda that are very extensively used in kotlin so you can code faster yeah okay so let's see let's take a look another simple example in this code we extend simple integer class with two nisp functions that return the alphabetic value based on integer value so in, instead, for instance, you have an integer of, for example, 81, and we can convert it. Maybe you create another function to convert the the integer to the uh, alphabetic value, the a value, yeah, or the or the nisp value for that integer. You can do that with functions, or you may using the Android extension to extend the capability of the integer okay 
so as you can see here we have fund functions and then we uh, we start typing or we begin with the integer class as you can see here ENT means the integer class and we define our custom methods to NISP okay to NISP and then it returns strings inside it as you can see here we have a when or you may replace it with if if the if the value we refer to this here if the value of this integer is more than 81 means that it returns a 73 means that it's written ep and so on okay so uh, we create our custom function with the ability of android extension kotlin extension okay um uh, this is a quick way to add more capability of another uh, object or uh, existed class and we don't want to extend it so we don't want to create our custom class of integer and extend it with our custom function we don't want to do that because uh, i think it's not necessary to do that okay so this is uh, how android ktx introduced it can extend the functionality of the original classes with our additional custom functions yeah or properties yeah you can you can extend to custom function or properties as well okay so how to use this Okay, let's take a look as the uh, on the next example. So we have a nilai integer which is 83, and as you can see here, we we not use a custom class for integer. We only use the traditional original integer, but with additional capability. So when you do this now, every on every integer you created, you can have this to NISP. Is that excellent right yeah so every integer you created you can access the to this okay that's the beauty of the android core ktx so when you print learn this nilai to this of course it will call the the function on your projects yeah on your to this project and then it will, it will return based on this value so the 83 means a yeah it returns a all right there is another uh, example of Android KTX. As you can see here, it can also extend the view object. Yeah. For instance, here are the KTX codes to extend all the text view with the Rubia the, the notation prefix. So uh, we we begin with fun and the text view class. And as you know, the text view also have the set text functions and then we call we um uh, uh, we use parameter content string which is we want to display it on the text view body and then we have this yeah this dot text equals the denotation rupias on the as a, as a prefix and followed by content so when you call set text on an edit text or the text view it always shows rupias on the front of it okay so um, that's a, a, what, an example of it takes and how to use this yeah how to uh, use this on our project what setup to ma to you must do okay um, fortunately on every letters address studio every project that you created already have the dependency configuration to use Android KTX okay please check your cradle and you will find this implementation android x core core ktx 1.3.2 okay so it's already in there so you can try to use it and hopefully you can code much much faster okay now uh, let's try the example with tutorials so in this tutorial we are going to use android ktx and Picasso to handle student photo yeah, to load the student photo okay so um the tutorial here we want to um display the student photo and we also want to display the progress bar yeah to indicate the loading progress as in progressing load the image from the server and then we going to extend the image view to um to call the queso and 
uh, calling the uh, vacation and return the image resources to the image view itself and also handling the progress bar okay so instead of doing calling the application one by one on in indifference activity or fragment you can have one you can extend the image view itself that can use the picasso and it used to reload the data on every image on image view on your projects okay so we extend the image view and we we put the picasso in it to load the image okay next um before we continue please load up your previous projects and the first thing you do is to adjust this image view okay so we have this one so um look for the layout of student list item which is this one okay so click on that image here and then i have the id of image view you may replace it if you want and i'm going to set a fixed size set a fixed width 100 dp on this image okay and then i'm going to put one progress bar the circular progress bar right in the center of the image but of course you need to constrain it here and also here here and also on the bottom so therefore um the progress bar, bar always appear on the center of the image and you may re rename the id but yeah it's all up to you okay next uh the next step is we we need to extend the image view load image functions to handle how the progress bar react to the picasso load image functionality it means that um if the image finish load we have to hide the progress bar however all those extensions should be put in the same file and then we call it a utility file but um where we should put the file is it in a model or view or view model i think it's not belong to any of those packets any of this uh unit therefore we it doesn't make sense yeah it it's not this utility class is not model also not view also not view model okay so it's only supporting uh, to help us to code uh, easier and and it doesn't relate to any of that mvvm so therefore we could create a new package for this utility file okay right click on your come package new package file and you create a new util file a package i mean and then you create a new util file inside this util package right click new Kotlin file class and you can type util utility and choose the file here so you have empty file Kotlin here and first thing to do we going to extend our image view fund image view okay so uh, this one will import the original image view of androids okay so instead of uh, creating a class that extend so let me show you here so um my image view extension from image view instead of doing this yeah instead of doing this we can utilize the kotlin extensions in on the image view so um we want to override or create our custom functions of load image and then we put two things inside it first is the url means the the image url could be null and also the progress bar okay we're going to pass two things the image url and the progress bar why we pass the progress bar because uh, we want to hide the progress bar after the picasso finish load the image okay so this one is progress bar right right so we have body functions here and what should we do inside it of course are we going to implement the picasso so you're going to open the build gradle and then in under json here we are typing the implementation 
okay implementation of com square up dot picasso picasso i believe it, i believe this one is the letters yeah okay seven one eight to eight okay don't forget to press signal and wait a few seconds right okay nice so we have uh, picasso in our project now we can use that in this in the image view uh, function extension so back to the util classes i mean the util file we call the pk so here just alt enter to import it to our uh, file here and then get you, you know that uh, the pk show use a kind of a chaining method means that you can call the dot after dot after dot after dot and so on you can see another way to uh, to replace this chaining method using the option files but uh, is that beyond of the scope of our lecture today okay so we stick with this uh, chaining method so we're going to load the url specific url which is best in here and we're going to resize because um, our um, our current photo it's smaller yeah it's it's small photo i mean small image so we're going to resize 400 pixels with an h and we doing the center crop oh yeah i almost forgot about center crop before we continue i forgot that click on your student list layout here click on this uh, image view layout and make sure that you are also have the scale type of of the center crop okay so make sure you stretch the image using the scale type of center crop okay go back to util now if an error appear we going to show a uh, variable throwable that that indicate an error so we don't have that actually we can create it faster easily by right click on the variable new factor asset click on the clip art and find the error category error icon okay click on the error icons press ok press next and finish right so you you can place the error icon inside this error um a function of a castle don't forget to import the r here or variable dot icp line error 24 and finally dot into okay remember uh picasso use dot into which is you pass the image view okay remember we currently inside this image view with uh, which is when you type this it refers to this image view okay so whenever you type this you access the property of image view you can call any function inside the image view or property of image view and so on okay so um let's try this and oh sorry one more thing um we have to call the load image view inside our um adapter yeah remember the student list xml the fragment i mean the layout is used by fragments of student list student list fragments and it's used to render the item individually in recycler view and remember the recycler view needs adapter to handle that render to render the contents i mean and then um, we should check the adapter and add following code inside the on band view holder to call the load image of the image view okay so uh, let's take a look the id of this um, student image we have uh, the id of image view i believe all right image view and this one uh, the, the student list item is used by the adapter so we go to the adapter student list adapter and you should um, go to the on bind view holder yeah so we have this on band view holder to render the content of the recycle view data individually as you can see here we already have text the id and name 
and handle the interaction with button detail and we add one thing one more thing older view dot image view right image view which is referred to our student photo dot as you can see here we have the load image our custom functions that uh, that we created on the utility class so we call that so the url should be inside our student list array okay so call the student list array on the specific positions which is indicated by this parameter here dot photo url okay so that's the first parameter for the second parameter is the progress bar itself as you can see we have that progress bar here and it has name id of progress bar so you we, we, you pass you pass the progress bar uh, id by uh, i mean the the object yeah the object not the not the id so do not type this yeah do not type this because we expect the object of progress bar not the id all right so do not type this instead of use that doing that you can call the holder dot view dot progress bar okay progress bar taken from so let's take a look here do we import the correct things all right okay yeah i think yes okay yeah yeah this one yeah the student list item okay so this is the correct progress bar yeah why i'm i'm afraid because um we have several progress bars previously that has the same id progress bar so uh, after you go you should check your import whether you or you import the right or wrong thing or correct one so the student list item dot view it's the correct one because our adapter refer to the student list item right i think that's it um for our pk so let's try that okay let's try that let's hit the emulator and i will be back after um it finished load okay all right it's launched and then it shows progress bar that connected to our rest api as you can see here we have this loading yeah this lo uh, progress bar loading here and then it loads the image as you can see here after the uh, the image finish load the progress bar is not disappear yeah it's not uh, gone okay it's not invisible okay but as you can see here our pk show works fine it connect to the server and then it loads up image respectively but the problem here we should hide the visibility hide the progress bar after it done or it finished load okay how to fix that okay to handle progress bar we can use the picasso callback functions okay picasso callback function so let's go back to the uh, utility class and then in this one yeah the into one here it has callback functions which is you can use lambda style the object here and then it reuse the callback classes and it you have to wait a minute you have to import callback here let's take a look we have yeah the import one just the callback of Picasso here yeah? and then after that you can implement the object to two functions yeah on success and on error okay so delete the to do and when it's success means that you have to hide the progress bar so you can call this progress bar dot visibility dot view dot done right so okay import yes right let's try again hit the play buttons and see what it looks like
okay um, it loads up yeah after the image shows it's uh, the the progress bar is set to visible invisible so actually it's still in there but you cannot see it because we set it as gone okay so um, that's how you work with progress bar and the uh, castle okay so we extend our image view to our custom load image and then we use picasso to load up the url of the image and then we also uh, override or use the callback of the picasso to um to check to check for whether it's success or not uh, it's finished load or not and oh yeah one more thing is actually the picasso also have the placeholder yeah i mean the placeholder yeah the placeholder that can you can use to uh, replacing the progress bar okay but unfortunately it can only handle a single image of drawable yeah you call the drawable and call whatever you like i see baseline launcher whatever so you use the loading image in the placeholder as replace to replace the progress bar but you cannot animate it yeah unless you create your own custom animation function okay so i use uh, i use this progress bars um alternatives yeah to show the indicator of loading image okay right next up is the homework yeah and you have to do the homework of the student details so how it looks like yeah so when when it looks up every single student here you can click the detail and it navigate to the student list detail fragment and it loads up the single student data here as you can see here when i click this noni detail it shows its data include its photo and uh, same thing happen if you have if i click others uh, persons okay so in this case um, you need to use the rest api do not send all everything like in in the previous example when you can send uh, data from this one to this one okay in order to do that to help you out i'm creating the endpoint for single student yeah so if you access the advanced g2 solution.com slash student.php it will return the array yeah remember it will return the array of students a lot of students but if you replace the url with this question mark dot id this one is called query string here yeah? query string variable so the question mark dot id equals and then followed by student id you may replace this one with id of students it will return a single object okay single student object as as you can see in the next example here so i have http rtv c 2 solutioncom student php question mark id equals blah 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 here this number okay it will return something like this so as you can see this output is json object yeah starting with curly bracket and 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 with uh, the rapid curly bracket so this is single object of student and if you delete the id yeah delete the id uh, student.php for example you got a lot of students and it begin with a bracket yeah bracket and end with bracket means that it's a json array instead of json object okay so means that uh, you need to modify your json to uh, in order to it can able to read single object okay so this is the hint you can use the from json student remember this one is single object student and the type of student you can get easily by calling student column class dot java that's it yeah so it's replacing the list from the previous example okay so that's endpoint for single student use that to retrieve the data 
of single student and use that consume that in our detail fragment okay another hint yeah you could create an argument in the student detail fragments navigation graph destinations this argument contains the student id so you can use that id in the um folly yeah to reach out the endpoint api for the specific student all right so the due date is next week you have to submit it to, uh, on the next week due date and uh, the submit that means that you have to commit and push before the due date you can use your old repo url that's fine for me just need to copy paste the url again in the ULS and submit it before the week seven push and commit before the week seven okay if you have any questions for today's lecture you can ask me directly on email or reach me out on hangout okay thank you for watching see you again next week bye bye